Hi friends, this is Tracy from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how we can get our double pinwheels moving. If you stay with me to the very end, I will show you some different variations of this pinwheel. Enough talking already, let's get moving. So for today's patriotic block, I decided on some grunge two and a half inch strips. Look at all this beautiful patriotic red, white, and blue fabric that I got at Walmart. I mean, what a great deal. They had fat quarters and they had some yardage too. This fabric is so cute. So I'll go through this so you can see some anchors. I mean, look at that watermelon. I just love this. The lobster pattern, oh my word, it's cute. I mean, you can see I got one in every pattern. <laughs> one that I saw was cutest of all was this. Check out this pinwheel 4th of July patriotic pinwheel fabric. I mean, is this darling or what? So cute, I mean, really, what a find. So this is how we're going to make this striped block right here. We're going to use the tube method. And if you haven't heard of that or seen it, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. I took my two and a half inch strip and I cut it right in half. And how I did this to help me make sure I got it right in the middle, <laughs> I actually folded it in half and then I ironed it and then I cut along that iron mark. That was helpful. To make one full block of the stripes, you're gonna need about 10 inches in length, and these are one and a quarter inch in width. Now you can see here that I fussy cut this. This is going to help our block have motion. So when you look at it, it'll give that illusion of a pinwheel, hopefully. Cross your fingers on that one. So in order to make this stripe, you're gonna need a darker fabric and then a medium to light fabric in between there so that it gives that nice contrast of the stripe. So you will need five pieces and make sure that your dark pieces are on the ends. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew all of these together with a quarter inch seam allowance. So this is what you should have once you sew a quarter inch seam allowance on all of those strips. Now this ends up measuring approximately about four and a quarter inches in width. It depends on how big your quarter inch seam allowance was that you used on what that width is going to end up being. I found this really cute, uh, I don't know what they're called, those wish flowers or when you blow on them, they scatter. They're really, they're really sweet. It sort of reminded me of fireworks for the 4th of July. So I thought, how fitting is that? <laughs> you need to make sure that this is high contrast for these two. You do have the high contrast here in the medium to low print, and then you have the darker shade. Well, you need, this is the other side. This is going to be the other side of this one. See that one? See how that goes right there? So this is gonna be the other side. So you want this one to stand out. So you want this to be a low value, low volume print or um, white on white, like this one had polka dots and all that. So. so this right here is four and a quarter inches. It's gonna match this. Now what you're going to do is take it to the sewing machine and you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam right there and along that edge right there. We're essentially going to be making a tube out of this right here. So this is it all sewn up right there. I did get a little wonky right there. Hopefully it all works out. And then here's this side right here. So this is what you should have, just like that. It's a tube. So this right here 
is about four and a quarter inches, we had said. You want to measure from edge of fabric to edge of fabric, and we want to measure in four and a quarter inches. Now, if you're a little wonky on the end here, you can trim some of that and make that straight. So we want to come in about four and a quarter inches. So one, two, three, four, and our quarters right there. And then once we get that, we want to go ahead and just slice it right there. See? Set that right there. And then you want to grab another one. You'll need two of these sets for this block. You want to measure four and a quarter and then cut. Now I do have enough for one more block there. And essentially what you want to do is just make a whole strip of these depending on how many you're going to make. The next step is we are going to cut these at a diagonal. Now after you've sliced them though, you want to make sure that you don't set them aside and forget about them right now and do them later. You want to cut them right away on the diagonal. And the reason for this is if you even get it turned this way or this way, it's going to change the whole outcome of how your block looks. And we want these to be the same. So I'm going to put those back like that. It's amazing how easily it does change too. Cut from corner to corner. And we wanna make sure that the diagonal is in the same position as well. Meaning we don't want the diagonal to go this way on this one and then this way on this one. We want them to be uniformed. So we'll show you what we have here. We open those up and look at how pretty, oh my goodness. So in here, I'm just gonna finger press these real quick, right like that. Give those a good press. So if you look here, this is that block right here, a different colorway. So even these by themselves are really cute. That right there gives us a teeny tiny pinwheel all by itself there. And you see that wave in there just gives a lot of movement. But we don't want to stop there. We want to make this a double pinwheel which gives it a lot more character and a lot more movement to the quilt block. So let's set these aside for right now. You wouldn't think that that goes well together because it's the same pattern. It ends up having so much movement it makes the block look harder than what it actually is. So for this block right here, you're going to go corner to corner and cut right from corner to corner. You end up with four half square triangles. So let's put this together real quick and I'll show you how this movement happens. We're going to pull one of these. These are really easy to get mixed up too. This looks like my quilt block is literally moving. I mean, that's what it does for my eyes. Now, before we sew that together, I just wanted to show you some different variations. So if we take these out, I even like this one right here. Now I even used a different fabric within here. It's still stars, but it has like a different contrast. Look at how that just waves in there. And then with the stripes, it just almost makes it look a little psychedelic, right? Imagine this possibly in a different colorway that's not 4th of July. You could do different contrasting colors and really make this quilt block pop. But let me take these out again. Red. And I did blue, blue. Here's yet another combination right here.
for this demonstration, I am going to sew these together because I just really think that that pops. So this is how we're going to sew this up. We are going to take these two blocks and sew them on the diagonal right there. We're going to take these two blocks and sew those on the diagonal together. These two and sew our quarter inch seam there and our quarter inch seam here. So let's see what we have so far. Looking good. It's like a puzzle piece. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now it's time to square this block up. We're going to clean it up a bit. The main thing that I'm going to keep an eye on is this right here. We need to keep an eye on the center. If you're not watching and paying attention how you're going to trim this block, this will happen. Now I went ahead and sewed it together. I already knew that it was going to be way off but I just wanted to go ahead and sew it to show you what it looks like when you've cut too much on one side. And that was an accident and it happens. There's nothing I could have done to fix this particular block. I will have to make a brand new one and insert it in there. Because once you cut, remember, measure twice, cut once rule. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I think I didn't measure. We've all been there though, right? I'm not the only one. Let me know down in the comments. Have you made big, huge mistakes by not measuring twice and you just went ahead and just cut through? Mm. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but I mean, we could still put a button right there or embellish something right in the center, but I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do with that, so. I do notice here that because of my sewing, <laughs> which isn't always that great. I have a problem sewing straight. This one, these three look more alike in the points than this one. So I can take off a little bit more on that little edge, this edge right here, and that's gonna help that match up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one first. This is a five and a half inch squared ruler right here, and it has this diagonal on it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is line up the diagonal on this diagonal, the long side, this right here. Now I already know I need to take off a little bit there. I'm probably going to end up with a five and a quarter inch block. Turn it around there and now we're going to hit the diagonal going this way and since i already know it's probably going to be about five and a quarter inches i can line it up there on the quarter inch mark and keep that center that diagonal so and if i go back Looks a little better. And I'm going to stay away from that edge if I can on the rest of them, and we'll see what we end up with. This one needs to come in a little bit too on that tip. So if I line up my diagonal here and make sure that I've covered that quarter inch around everything, that's going to be just flush there, which is good. Take a little bit off that tip. Turn it. Put it on the diagonal. Make sure that it's at the quarter inch and it's on the diagonal, so we're straight there. I want you to notice here how that's gonna give us that tiny pinwheel in the center. How cute is that? We actually could have changed one of the colors of our stripe too and made this maybe navy and then it would spread out to the red. That would be cool too. I'm loving how this is turning out. Okay, 
So our next step is to take the top two pieces and sew those together and that together right there. And then we'll go ahead and finish up the block. This is what you should have so far. Those two blocks are sewn and those two blocks are sewn. Then we're gonna flip it over. And your seam allowance is going that way. Hopefully the seam allowance will go this way. Yep. Now we're going to sew these two together. So we're just gonna put those together like that. And we're gonna nest those middle seams together really good. This is what I like to do. Whenever I'm trying to center things up, I always pull it back about a little quarter to a half and make sure that everything is nesting at the same time. Because you see those two white pieces right there and on that side. We want those points to come together. So once you have that, you might want to pin that. And then we can square these up this way. Sometimes what I do when I need points to match up in the center, I will actually start sewing just before that center line, that center point, start sewing there my quarter of an inch and then go down. And then I check it and make sure everything's right. And then I turn it in the sewing machine and then I do that side. So that's just a tip for you. If you really need it to match up perfectly, that's how I would do it. And that's how I'm gonna do it on this one. Let me just show you. I started right there, just past that center point and down. I didn't sew that part yet, but then I check it to make sure and that looks pretty good. I'm. I really like how it's turning out. And I'm actually going to open the seam up and iron it flat. I am gonna use my wood block I find this little wood piece right here I ordered online. It's called a clapper. And let me tell you, it's a game changer when you are making quilt blocks. If you want everything to lay as flat as it can lay flat, as far as it'll lay flat, you definitely need a piece of wood. And this is just raw wood. I don't know. It's like a magic wood block, right? But really, there's no magic in it. It's just wood. Before I square this block up, I just wanted to share with you if you wanted to put some uh, cornerstones and sashing and such around this, you can. This just goes to show that you can manipulate your fabric and fussy cut it in a certain way so that it actually gives you that effect of movement. Let's show you with this one. There's with the blue stars. That looks cute too. Now this is a lighter version. You can see here that there's not as much contrast in this lighter version as with this one right here, with the darker blue and the darker red. It's more of a contrasting, but yet I still find that I can see the pinwheel in this because of this right here being light. So you'll wanna keep that in mind when you make this block. It looks awesome with the blue striped fabric here on the inside being the inner pinwheel, but also we can switch it around so that the white is actually the pinwheel. Just simply by switching out the white for the striped and turning it this way, you get a totally different look on this block. I really like it that way too. Until next time on the sewing channel, keep it moving and take care.